Our Story Productions presents Martin County on TV, spotlighting the organizations, businesses, and citizens who are making a difference in our community today. And with interviews and stories done by local television shows over the last 25 years, here you're sure to learn more about the county we call home. Get ready for this is Martin County on TV. Martin County on TV, talking business. Good day, Jeff Rouse here, executive producer of Our Story Productions with another exciting episode of Martin County on TV. And we have wonderful guest today with us tell us the folk tell the folks who you are i'm kim white from fairmont awards owner nick rudolph fairmont awards owner both owners yes you know i've been in that store several times and i gotta tell you it's darn nice thanks i'm very impressed tell us a little bit here tell us a little bit of how it all began and what got you into the business um well it <laughs> Just started with some design work for the previous owner and then just decided to purchase it and had a dream of making it bigger and better and expanding. And the pieces of the puzzle have just fallen into place. And, and the two of you are from this area. Is this home for you, Fairmont area? Yes. Okay. And uh, how long have you been? What year did you start the business? Um, we took it over in 2017. Okay, all right. And tell folks a little bit about when, when you say the, we talk about the business, what kind of things do you offer? Well, we have anything from trophies, uh, awards, plaques, medals, um, custom clothing, anywhere from your school stuff to your grandma shirts or your one-off 60th birthday shirts. And then we also have our new line, which we launched last October, okay. of our men's and women's business and business casual in your everyday casual clothes. You know, and that's what I was excited to hear about because I've been in there several times. Very impressive. Uh, I love what I see, the line of clothing, the things that you carry, uh, very impressive and much needed in our community, I feel. Yes, it kind of was, you know, when Anderson's closed, it was a, a big void in the community sure. and um, it really needed to be filled. Awesome. It, it really needed to be filled and I went home and I said, you know, I think I want to open a men's clothing store. We had the store space. so. Nick's like, let's do it. We started out with our Fairmont Men's Formal Wear Company, doing the tuxedo rentals, and then just kind of expanded from there. COVID took a little bit hard on us, sure. and we just ran with it. Well, that's very and cool. And it's been awesome. And, and, you know, I love your passion, and I can tell you're into it. And I have to say from a fellow uh, gentleman who my wife also owns a business mm -hmm. here in town, right. uh, I hear a lot of things coming from you like, Yes, that's right. Yes, dear. Mm -hmm. I understand. Mm -hmm. That's the support that you women are looking for in business. Is that correct? Yes. So tell me, what's your involvement with the company then? So I'm more behind the scenes stuff. Okay. I do the wood shop because we have a full wood shop in the basement. So I do do the plaques, all the stuff like that. Trophies. As far as the sales go on the floor, I don't do that pretty much. I'm sure. more behind the scenes person now. Uh, are you the right hand man? Left. <laughs> are you the handy person yeah. when you need some yeah. assistance yeah. call him in we need help yep pretty yep, much yep. Awesome. that's exactly it that's awesome i've been there many many times <laughs> i understand so tell me uh where you see the business going and what is the mission slash goal uh, in the future i foresee expanding even more i have a five-year goal and i am pushing towards that five-year goal a little faster than five years awesome so um big things are coming when you decide when you want to do something a little different is this partly based on what you're hearing the community needs yes uh, everything i have done so far has been community-based awesome. um, by customers coming in the store saying, oh, you know, this is something we used to have. It'd be really nice to have this back in the community. So I go on the search for it. That's awesome. Um, and it sometimes takes me several phone calls to find somebody within my network that can help me get to where I need to go. Sure. But I have an amazing network behind me for it. Well, you know, your store looks awesome. 
Thank you. Uh, very sharp. And every time I'm in there, there's new product, new lines, new things going on. It's very impressive. I try to trickle in new things all the time to keep people coming back. Absolutely. That's the secret. It is. So as we're sitting here, I noticed you both look sharp. Thank you. Thanks. Where the heck did you find the, these, this wardrobe? This is awesome. Well, right down at our store. Oh, Come there on you go. down. There you go. We can we can fit you from you know head to toe on in the men's. The women's um, can't quite fit your toes yet, but we're working on it. Okay, so you have a full line, a men's line uh, as one of your lines. Tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about that. As far as the men lines goes, we have shoes. We got so we have slip-ons. We have tennis shoes. We got dress shoes. As and then we have also mission belts. We okay. have those in. We have jeans, which is Devil Dog, which is... The company is founded by a retired Marine. Oh, wow. And then they're partners in the Wounded Warrior Project. Oh, how cool. Which is one of the reasons we brought them in. I love mm -hmm. it. And I see you have a nice jacket on. I'm assuming yes. that came from the store too? Yes. We have sport coats, dress shirts, so FX wow. Fusion, Seven Diamonds. Uh, what is it? Trend. Mm -hmm. And then the new the one that you just got in. Was it John Randall? Yes. That's awesome. And tell us a little bit about the ladies. We carry anything from jeans to um, to tops of different types. We carry several different brands. The ladies, we have um, Carissa and me. And like Nick had said, um, the FX Fusion. Um, FX Fusion and Carissa and me is a father-daughter design team out of Mankato. Okay. So we brought them in because they're local. And there's Hey You, and I'm looking at bringing in another one. And then as we had talked about earlier, the Fairmont Men's Formal Wear, we do tuxedo rentals. So we can outfit you for your wedding, or a special occasion, or prom, or maybe you have a funeral that you don't want a suit for, you can also rent one of those. Wow. Well, you're filling a lot of needs for our community. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you're doing a lot of work at the same time, correct? Yes. <laughs> well, good for you, I say. Thank you. So share with us where they can find you. And a little. do you have a presence on the web? Sure. You can find us at 310 Downtown Plaza. We're located on the last block of Downtown Plaza across from the church. Okay. And then um, social media. We are on Facebook and I'm working on Instagram. And we are also have a website you can check us out at. And now, do check Facebook because we run all our specials on there. And we post when new products come in. You can check them out on there. I was just going to say, I bet you put post new products when they come on there. That's a great feature to mm -hmm. have people. That's very cool. Well, you know, and speaking of that makes me think, we're very excited you're downtown Fairmont. Mm -hmm. A great asset to our downtown. And I know you're very involved in making things happen downtown. I want to thank you publicly for that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you much for joining us today. And we can have you back because I know from the times I've been in your store, it changes all the time. So mm -hmm. will you honor us and come back again and keep us updated on what happens is when things change? Sure. Absolutely. That'd be great. Thanks again for stopping. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Martin County on TV, Talking Business. Hi, welcome to the Pioneer Museum. Come on in, we're going to take a tour of the museum and see a lot of different things that I think you'll find very interesting. My name is Lenny, this is Jim. Hey everyone. And I think what we're going to do is take a look at the research library first. Yeah. How's that yeah. sound, Jim? Let's head on in. Yeah. What do we have in the research library that uh, is of interest? Because a lot of people come in here and spend a lot of time in here. Oh yeah. Uh, well, well, first you can see these large books here. These are the Fairmont Sentinels. Uh, they go back to like the 1870s. A lot of good information from the town's history. Okay, what about up here? These are our research binders. Uh, these were uh, articles, different documents that were collected together that people uh, sort of put together for efficiency. So if you're looking up, for example, uh, let's say 1914, you want to know what happened in Fairmont? Uh, this would be a great start. Okay, what other major things are in this room that are uh, very good for research? Um, well, Some of the big items. Yeah, a lot of people over on this wall over here, we've got our city directories, phone books, uh, plat maps, a lot of different things. Like if you want to know where somebody lived, where a business was. I like pictures. Uh, I like pictures. Are there pictures? Uh, yeah, if you take a look right back here, we've got our photo file. And this has just a ton of great pictures going back in the county's history here. 
you can see there's a nice family on a Sunday stroll decide hey let's take a quick family picture yeah those are just just a lot of fun a lot of people like to see yeah, like to see their family like to see different things what about so. the history of Martin County well we can cover that too um, if you take a look at these cabinets let me watch you open one of those right over there oh it's his history file yeah all right so these are different documents that are going back the one you just pulled out here this is the first Fairmont Highway post office trip so you can see there this was from a Miss Marguerite Ringheisen 1955 first highway trip there so yeah lots of little documents and different things that uh, represent okay. the history of our county well we've got a few things in here but there's a lot more to see yeah so let's move on to another room absolutely all right welcome back everybody we are here in the main lobby of the museum say Lenny what can you tell us about all this great stuff well there's a lot of things in the lobby that are of interest to people starting right here this is a display that we rotate this one happens to be Martin County School Sports. We can see a girls tennis team from 1977, uh, 1957 baseball team, a lot of different things, not only from Fairmont, but all the uh, communities in Martin County. Moving back this way, you can see that we have a music display. Now, back in the 60s, 50s, 60s, there were a lot of garage bands, and many of these are represented in that from that era. Also we have a, a pool table and a, a pinball machine from the youth center, the Fairmont Youth Center. And Jim, what do you have over there? Oh, this is Don Dalkey's uniform from the Fairmont Martins. You know, Lenny, I played baseball too. Where's my uniform? Uh, probably in your locker somewhere, <laughs> wherever that happens to be. Uh, yeah, the Martins were a great semi-pro baseball team. Moving along over this way, there's a neon sign, KSUM. That was a radio station that still is in uh, Fairmont, and this is the original sign. Uh, KSUM went on the air, I believe it was December 31st, 1948. Over here is another sign, a feed bag. The feed bag was a drive-in restaurant that was located on Albion Avenue in Fairmont. Very popular uh, restaurant. And the last thing I'd like to mention about this room is Sir Paul McCartney. His wife had a line of uh, vegetarian foods at Fairmont Foods. And Paul McCartney and his uh, late wife were in Fairmont in December of 1994. Very interesting. Now that's just a few of the things that's in this room. There's a lot more to see, so be sure to stop and we're gonna move on to another room. Hey, we're in the Pioneer Room in the Martin County Historical Society Pioneer Museum. Absolutely. Why is it called Pioneer Room, Jim? What can you tell us about it? Well, Pioneer refers to the European settlers that came over in the mid-1800s, uh, people from places like Britain, Germany, Scandinavia, um, and this room represents a lot of the things that e they either brought with them or that they uh, crafted here to uh, make their home. You see things like furniture, uh, spinning wheels to make clothing, um, couches, old pictures. Back in this part of the room you can see some very big wardrobes, uh, bed frames, uh, you can see some old cradles, baby buggies, um, just a lot of different things here uh, representing the way that they made their homes you know in the 1850s, 1860s, etc. So uh, what do you have on that side of the room Lenny? Well as we come into this part of the Pioneer Room we have a beautiful dining set uh, there's a Hoosier, there's the answer to a uh, cell phone in 1900, it's a telephone on the wall, very interesting and unique piece. And of course, we go back a little bit further, there's a complete kitchen. Everything from a stove to a, a refrigerator called an icebox at that time, even a dishwasher. I mean, there's just so many things in here, um, mm -hmm. carpet sweepers, uh, toaster. So many things in here that are just so unique and interesting and uh, you just have to come in and take a look and give yourself plenty of time because there's just a lot to see. So now we'll move on to the next room. Hey, welcome to the military room in the Pioneer Museum. Mm -hmm. Before we get started with this room, you might hear some creaking. And this building was built in 1917. It was the St. Paul's Convent School. So these floors are old. Anybody walking in, they're gonna get some creaking and bouncing. Also, mm -hmm. I'd like to mention, we try to refresh and rotate displays. So this room is 
really in the process of being uh, refreshed. We don't have it totally completed. It's been painted, uh, the displays have been moved around and changed, mm -hmm. new things have been added, other things have been put in storage. Uh, to begin with, Jim, I'll just start with this. Yeah. This is representative of the Civil War. There are weapons, uh, there are, there's ammunition, there are swords, uh, just a lot of different things that represent Civil War and other wars as well. And Jim, what do we have back here? What can you say about what's located over here? Oh, we've got a really great collection of uniforms out uh, here. This one here is a pretty good, complete World War I uniform. Uh, we have different things from World War I, gas masks, leggings, hobnail boots so you don't get trench foot. Um, these go to World War II, Korea, Vietnam. Uh, some of them were dress uniforms, some of them were more for in the field. Of course, you've got uh, helmets, hats, just a, a ton of different things. Um, we do have like combat flight helmets uh, from different pilots, uh, Navy hats, just a lot of fun uh, uniforms from uh, different time periods. Um, and those go all the way up to uh, modern times here. We've got the uniforms of the the Civio Brothers um, in very good condition. So, Lenny, what else do we got in this room? Well, if you look over this way, we've got all sorts of different things. This display is really in the process of being put together, so it's not complete. Back here we have weapons, we have a rifle collection, we have uniforms, uh, just so many different things. If you pan up or look up toward the ceiling, we've got Airplanes representative of primarily World War II era, but we have uh, uh, something from World War I as well. Just a very interesting room. You've got to come and see it. There are just more than we can just talk about in a few minutes. Martin County on TV flashback. Well, hello everybody. Welcome on in. Uh, it's another episode here today, and it's me this time, Blake Potoff at the Fairmont Opera House, uh, filling in the chair uh, with another great interview with somebody in our community today. Make sure you check out the shows coming up at the Fairmont Opera House. Check us out on Facebook or our website, fairmontoperahouse.org. Now, I am so excited today to be here with my new friend, uh, one of the, the great businesses here at Fairmont. Uh, this is Jeff from the Fairmont Butcher Block. Jeff, thanks for coming in today. It's nice for having me. Yeah, yeah, you bet. Now, Jeff, well, we've met before and I, I want to make sure that everybody else knows uh, all the great things about you that I know now. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. My name is Jeff Schmidt. I'm the owner of the Fairmont Butcher Block, new in town here. Been here a couple of years already. Um, originally from small town USA, Okabina, Minnesota, if you know where that is, yeah. other side of Jackson. But uh, yeah, came to town here with a dream of getting my own business going. Mm -hmm. Worked for hy -Vee for 15 years and I worked for a local butcher shop in Lakefield for eight always wanted my own thing, so here I am. Well, you made a great place to do it, too. I mean, Bacon Capital USA right here yeah, absolutely. In, in Martin County. So so you got into it through hy V and, and things like that. You've always wanted your own butcher shop. So so what kind of were the steps that you took to get here, and, and how's it working out so far? Well, so far, uh, I can't. I don't have a complaint at all. Town has welcomed me. Great. Um, plenty of business, staying busy all the time. Um, what got me here, I guess I, I always wanted my own. You know, I worked, uh, like I say, for hy V for a long time. Um, but one of the more gratifying things that I like is just working with the people, helping out, doing any special orders that I can, and uh, things like that. So special <laughs> orders, what kind of special things do you do? Do you do different types of game, or is it all just uh, beef and pork, or what's your yeah, kind of specialties? Yeah, absolutely, uh, uh, you name it. <laughs> I guess uh, we do anything from pulled pork, um, I do deer, so uh, custom processing, um, bringing the animal to me, and uh, we take care of it that way. We have a very nice retail store in building with uh, sticks and jerky and uh, 20 varieties of brats, uh, like I say, a steak. Whatever thickness you like, come on in. I'll cut it two inches or quarter <laughs> right. inch, whatever you're Sounds looking for. Sounds good. So w what kind of things can we expect when we walk in? You said there's a retail store. What kind of, uh, maybe, do you have some perks or anything for uh, some uh, customers that come back? Absolutely. We just uh, started a few months ago a customer loyalty program. Um, works great. It's uh, all about coming in, uh, spending time with us, and uh, we like to give back. We have nice uh, discounts if you're on the program. All it is is coming in and uh, punching your cell phone number in, and uh, on your fifth visit, you get 10% off. Oh, very good. Your birthday month, you get 20% off one time. So, 
you know it's a it's a pretty nice savings and you can uh, you can uh, save up for your uh, your grill out that way mm -hmm. and on your fifth visit you're gonna get 10 percent off so sounds good yeah very good. So I have a, one last question um, before we take a bit of a break because I think we have some breaking news coming in. But I want to get to this question first. So uh, growing up on a farm, we always had cattle and hogs and things that we could just bring in. Is that something that we could bring in now or how does your process work to bring that to you? Sure. Um, so Tuesday is my custom processing day. Um, what you do uh, is you call ahead or stop by the shop and we'll uh, look on our calendar, get you booked to uh, bring your beef in. Um, generally, it's about a, oh, a month or so that you uh, have to wait, um, but get yourself down on the books and uh, bring it in to us on Tuesday, and uh, we'll take it from there. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, like I said, I, we just got word that there's some breaking news coming in, and, and I don't remember if you've, if you've seen the, the show before, but there used to be a uh, segment called Almost Breaking News, and I think we have some Almost Breaking News right now, and it's a report done by Mike Foster in 2006 um, about a railroad club here in town, and it talks about uh, the club and, and how that kind of functioned and everything. So have you seen that one before? I haven't, oh, but yeah? I'd love to. Well, you want to watch it together? Absolutely. All right, let's check it out. Okay, I'm so excited because now I get to go on a train ride. I'm going all the way out to Seattle to see Bill Gates because I hear that he's retiring and I'm going to get the news first this time. Oh, this sign says to the trains. This is easy. I like this. I can do this now. I'm very excited. I've never been on a train before. This is going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait. I hope I can get my baggage checked and where are the trains? Where are all these little bitty trains? I can't sit on these little bitty trains. What's going on? I'm supposed to take a big train to Seattle. This is the model railroad club? Oh no, I messed it up again. Okay, I'm back. We're here at Our Story Studios. I'm with Wayne Quaid. We're going to talk about the Fairmont Model Railroad Club. So Wayne, can you tell me a little bit, what is the Fairmont Model Railroad Club? Well, basically, it's a group of guys that have a great deal of interest and passion for model railroading. And they've been able to take this up on a format where the public can see it, and it's not just a home layout. And they've built an extensive layout, and uh, it's just an amazing club to be part of. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, can you tell me a little bit about how the club formed and where you're at? Well, in the late 70s, they were a modular club, and they were moving around a lot, and they... Uh, ran into a lot of problems with that situation and they eventually found a place that they could settle in on and have a permanent layout. And um, with over a ton of plaster and over a half a mile of track, it is definitely a permanent layout. Okay. Where, where's it located right now? It's Right now it's at 301 Downtown Plaza and um, we're generally meeting at Tuesday night. So we have a lot of fun with that layout oh, okay it, this is open to the public right people can come in on a tuesday night they could stop down anytime otherwise okay. we have um open houses at it, um the dates that we plan for okay so what, explain what, what does the layout look like what what's the, what's the whole thing about there when you get down there well when we first started the layout we didn't want to get over pacific in certain areas geographically so we decided that the layout would be anywhere usa and so we've included a lot of fun things with that idea. We've got anywhere from Mount Rushmore, we've got open pit mining, we've got t um, timber harvesting industries, um, just a great array of different facets of real railroading that's reflected down to the model area. Okay, and now do the members themselves bring in their own trains? Is that what they're using? Their own trains and their own tracks when they do that? Yes, and that is part of where a lot of members are able to really buy into the layout. They're able to bring their own stock. A new member who happened to have a, uh, a Christmas train layout, he could bring his Christmas train down there and run it. Um, a modeler that's been in it for years and years and has a, um, a great deal of rolling stock can bring that down. And it's just a lot of fun to uh, mix some of that stock up. And a lot of guys have a lot of fun with that. Okay. So what, what you're talking about is it's it doesn't have to be fancy, brand new, huge trains. It can be the same ones you got as a kid for Christmas. You can bring those in on it? In fact, I still have some of the cars that I got when I was uh, a junior in high school. And I still have them and they run down there. Oh, it's great. 
So it's kind of interesting to hear that, that this hobby that starts with kids for most of us goes on for adults and, and, and it's not something that you have to look away from. It's actually accepted. Oh yeah, huh? and it's a lot of fun. Um, everybody has different areas of talent and different areas of interest that they enjoy with the hobby. And I think that's the great thing about model railroading. You can enjoy any facet of that hobby and really develop it. Um, and it really takes a life of its own and it's a lot of fun. Okay. Now, obviously, you could be a member to, for this organization, too. So what, what's the membership like there right now? Um, it's a great group of guys. We're willing um, to accept any new members or, or prospectives that want to join us. And um, we've been around each other long enough to know that um, we're not all that serious about some of the the banter and some of the things that are said. It's all said in fun, and we have a lot of fun as a group of people. And I think that's one of the more interesting things of the club is that the people um, from such diversities are so interesting to be mixed together like that with one common theme, and that's our interest in model railroading. Okay, that's that's really great to know. So when is it that uh, you guys meet, and, and where again do you meet? Well, usually we meet at Tuesday, and that could uh, start as early as 7 o'clock in the evening, and it could go on as late as till 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. Um, we meet at the club, which is 301 downtown Plaza, and we're in the basement down there. And um, it's a sight to see. It's really hard for me to describe this to you just this way until you get down there and see it. And it's really hard even for a camera to do it justice because it's so immense. And one of the most used phrase when people come in through the door is, Wow. <laughs> That's great. That's good to hear. Wayne, I appreciate you coming in and talking to us Thank about it. Thank you very much for having me. You bet. This is Mike Alert for Our Stories here at Our Story Studios. Wow, well, what a great clip. I, you know, it was so exciting to see that and see what a great club that really was. That looked awesome. Yeah, yeah. it really did. That All the work and hours and time that went into that, that for must sure. have been a great thing here in Fairmont. For sure. Yeah. So speaking of Fairmont, I have a question for you. How did you land here? You talked about Okabina and being on the other side of Jackson and uh, and then coming here to Fairmont. And I know part of it's starting your own business, but what, what drew you here to Fairmont? Sure, well, absolutely. I was out kind of looking around for a, for a place, thought of building one from scratch, and so I checked out a few towns. I looked and Wyndham had one for sale. I just so happened to be over here and I was at the movie theater and we come down that side street and I saw the building for sale. Wow, it was a butcher shop, you know, and very, very nice building. That's pretty much what drew me here, but I tell you, the thing about it is once I got here, it's a great town, you know, you have the lakes, uh, mm -hmm. Super, super nice community. Met a lot of people. Um, lots to do here. Yeah. You know, Okabina is not that big a town. It's so. really not. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Well, no, it's, it's, yeah, it's been very enjoyable here. So oh, Very good. Well, I appreciate it. And and I'm sure I'm not the first and won't be the last to say we're very happy to have you here in Fairmont. Appreciate uh, that. It is, a, it is a great place, and you know, your business is one that uh, really highlights some of the great things that are going on here. Specifically, uh, I mentioned before, the Baking Capital USA kind of movement going on here in Fairmont. If you haven't heard, Martin County is the Bacon Capital of the United States of America. And, and I heard a rumor that you brought some bacon here today, and I'm all about bacon. I, mean, I did. I, I did. This, I brought some. This body was built on bacon, <laughs> so, so I need to see some of this bacon stuff. If you can tell me a little bit about this, that'd be great. Absolutely. This is pepper bacon here. Now, mm -hmm. and, and I wanted to emphasize also that this is all done in building at the butcher block, and, and it's just a, it's a wonderful product. Mm -hmm. uh, got a different uh, variety or two. This one is the pepper. We can slice it any thickness for you, but uh, very one of our better sellers here. Yeah. So you said this is all done in house. Do you like? Do you smoke everything in house and take care of it all right there? Yeah, we have a smokehouse right in building. You can That's actually nice. see it from the counter when you walk in. Oh. Uh, and I'm always happy to show it off to people too. I'll throw the door open and say, "Check out what I've got smoking in there right now." So oh, I might have to make my way yeah, down. Yeah. Just a, if nothing else, just to smell what's going on. For sure. <laughs> Great. For sure. What else do we got here? Well, I brought a couple different kinds of bacon. Raspberry chipotle, another one of ooh. our of our uh, our flavored bacon. And uh, everybody thinks, "Ooh, is that going to be too spicy for me?" The, the raspberry, the chipotle, it just kind of offset. It gives yeah. it just a little more zip. Yeah. Um, I like to do it with burgers. Mm -hmm. You know, I put it over pork chops, 
you know, I, I cook with bacon all the time, so, you know, I didn't get this figure with, yeah, uh, right. with fruit. I think <clears throat> you and I are on the same boat in that one. <laughs> yep. The last one that I wanted to talk about is cottage bacon. A lot of times I, I get a, what's that? Where's that come from? This is off the uh, pork shoulder. And so, oh, as you can okay. see, it's a larger piece and uh, meatier, a little leaner. Um, the thing about this that very is very, very good is uh, when your tomatoes are ready in the garden, mm -hmm. this is great on BLTs. It's one oh, piece yeah. on there and it's very meaty. And I like to do breakfast sandwiches with it too. So it's just great stuff. Same flavor as your regular bacon, just meatier. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I think I'm needing a BLT right now. Yeah, yeah. That sounds really good. You know, mm -hmm. if you, you do a BLT right, you do two strips of bacon yeah. and then another strip of bacon on top of that with a little bit of lettuce for flavor. Yeah. That's how I make my BLTs. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's that sounds excellent. Was there anything else you need to talk about and show off? Well, I think you got something one else. I have one here. more thing here that I yeah. brought that uh, um, it's become very popular and it's a, it's a marinated chicken breast. Ooh, we cool. have uh, a bunch of different varieties. This one has a buttered garlic. Okay. Um, probably the most uh, common or the most uh, the most uh, one that sells, I should say. And, and people will do this just on the grill. You can dice it up. You can put it in a hot dish. You can make kebabs out of it. But uh, the flavor is outstanding. We have four to five different varieties of these on hand all the time. Great yeah. for the grill. Well, awesome. So you got a lot of different variety, a lot of different flavors mm. of things. We got the raspberry chipotle, we got the pepper, we got the 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 butter and the lemon stuff. Well, we got all sorts of things. So uh, really, what we should do is probably come check it out and see what all kinds of varieties are, because there's probably way too many to list. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. I have uh, six, seven different varieties of sticks every day uh, in the in the counter, and we're trying a new habanero this afternoon. Oh, right. Right now, if that one's not too spicy for yeah. you. Yeah. Um, brats. I have a usually over 20 varieties of brats on hand all the time so just try to have a lot of variety yeah. and we have the pork patties and the beef patties and and like i say stop in i can cut you a steak two inches thick if you don't see the one you like in the counter i'll get one out and i'll get you the one you want so well very good <clears throat> well this all sounds excellent now we want to make sure that everybody knows exactly where to find it so what's your address there and how can we get a hold of you if you have any questions sure 917 winnebago avenue uh, in fairmont here and our phone number, 507-399-2084. All right, well, that's great. Oh, do you have like a website and Facebook page too? Yes, we have a website and Facebook, so check oh, us excellent. out. Excellent, yeah, we'll make sure we go look at that. Uh, you know what, Jeff, it has been an absolute pleasure. I'm gonna have to snag one of these and go out and grill it right now. Um, I'm so excited for you to be here in Fairmont, and I very much look forward to having some bacon and some chicken and some steaks sometime here coming up soon. So Thank thanks you for stopping much. in. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Martin County on TV flashback. Well, there you have it. Another episode of Martin County on TV. We hope you enjoyed this episode and we welcome you to tune in again. Thank our sponsors for making this happen. And remember, it's not just the past, but the present that tells our story.